Welcome, everybody, to the So Sir Chernoff Interview Archives. I'm Josh Chernoff, and this week's episode features an interview with Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. I conducted this interview live at the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., hours before AEW Dynamite's premiere episode on TNT and, of course, Fight TV. Uh, it's really cool now looking back and seeing where Jungle Boy especially is right now in 2021, seeing where they were uh, back then before they had ever had the exposure to a worldwide audience. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview with Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. This is an honor for me. Not only am I getting to interview uh, one of the best up-and-coming rising stars, but also my first time ever interviewing a dinosaur. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. Thank you guys for being here. Oh, thanks for having us. It's really nice of you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, so, okay, we are just hours away from debuting live on TNT. Do we have nerves? Are we, are we, is it nervous energy, is it excitement? Or what are you feeling going into this? Going to, I, uh, I think there are some nerves. There are always nerves with these big shows. But I think, I think most of the hard work is done in a sense that well, the groundwork is late. Mm -hmm. And now what's going to happen is going to, now it's just time to go out there and perform. And that's what we're all here to do. It's what we love to do. But I think getting to this moment was, was the battle. Yeah, absolutely. I've been trying to do this for 65 million years, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long time. It's a long time. Uh, but in, in all reality, we've been training really hard for this for a long time, and we've been given an opportunity, and it just so happens to be at the perfect time when wrestling is taking a huge turn in a great direction. And now we have this amazing audience to see what we've been doing on such a small scale for years working on, and it's finally all come together at the right time. We got together at the right time, and uh, we're really excited about what we were about to be able to show people. Now, when All In first happened a little over a year ago, um, you guys were not on the show. Uh, when you were, wa did you watch All In? When you were watching All In, um, could you ever have imagined a that you would be a part of the promotion it would grow into, and b that it would grow into what it is? Um. For me, watching All In, I, I don't know if I knew exactly what it would grow into, but I knew watching it that it was going to change things. Um, I think everyone kind of knew that. It, the wrestling world changed with All In. Um, you know, and I don't know if I thought it would morph into AEW or whatever it was. I knew it would be different, though. And, um, you know, I told myself I want to be a part of that, whatever that is. And, um, yeah, I just feel very lucky to be here. Yeah, I watched it, too, and I felt at the time, I was like, man, I really wish I was a part of this. And... Honestly, I think I really need the next year to then have a goal like that in mind to really sure. motivate me and push me to really be prepared because I don't know if I would have been prepared then. And I don't think we would have got together and had this kind of chemistry happen either. So I think everything kind of fell into place at the right time. All In definitely gave me motivation. And then to be a part of All Out was um, definitely something that, you know, was more than I ever could have expected. Now, you mentioned uh, the chemistry between the two of you. Yeah. AEW is primed to have the best tag team to vi division maybe ever uh, in professional wrestling. What What is it like for you looking at the, obviously there has to be some excitement of, hey, I get to work with that guy. I get yeah. to, you know, stand across the ring from him. But what are you thinking? I mean, because neither of you really, I think when you joined AEW knew that you were going to be a tag team. Yeah. Um, what what thoughts are going through your head now as as we're entering into? I mean, there's got to be a first. There can only yeah. be one first yeah. AEW Tag Team Champion. So, what are you thinking? Um, you know, it's it's kind of daunting going up against the. I mean, who knows who will go up against in the tournament? But the Lucha Brothers. I mean, for right. example, first those guys are brothers. They've grown up with each other. They have a whole life's worth of experience teaming together. Uh, and obviously, that's kind of where we are a little bit behind. But I think. We really tapped into something special here. Um, I think you can see that, you know, with the fans. With I think I think we've just kind of reached something that a lot of people look for for a long time. And I don't know if everyone finds it, but I think we are. I think we're sitting on a gold mine, kind of. So I'm just excited to be able to show everyone that and kind of discover it for ourselves. Yeah, and then us being able to team together has let us kind of fully develop our our characters, our personalities out there, and the audience is connecting to it so well. Yeah. 
we haven't even had a chance to really have a straight tag match yet. We've had we had a tag match with three teams. We haven't had a match like we're going to have with the Lucha Brothers on October 16th. Um, that match right there is a chance for us to show things that we haven't been able to show anybody. Uh, to work with partners that I know like I worked with the Lucha Brothers a little bit before and I never worked with them against with each other teaming though So I'd really like to see what I can do with them being a bigger guy sure. that can also do a lot of things So for us being a chance a chance to tag is to kind of revolutionize tag team wrestling We want to push the envelope every match. I don't want to ever take a night off right. I don't want to ever just mail it in. It's never okay I don't care if we're on the main show if we're a dark match to me It doesn't matter. I think the point of AEW is that you're always bringing your elite abilities and you always have oh, something, yeah. yeah, and it's always something to show. And, like, I'm going to go home right after today. And I'm going to start working on some more things because it's not enough just to be here. I think we want to leave a legacy here. That's, that's great to hear. Um, AEW is, you know, they say AEW is for everyone. I mean, it's even for dinosaurs. Um, Absolutely. What does it mean to you to be able to be a part of a, a company from the start and a company that has such a, a strong mission uh, such a strong mission statement that we are going to bring everyone along with us. Yeah. We're going to, you know, this is, this is, uh, and I've, I've quoted Cody so many times on this broadcast already about saying, this is a revolution. Yeah. Um, what does it feel like for you to be a part of specifically this company, AEW? For me, it, um, it, it feels like, honestly, like the perfect kind of, it feels like the universe has come together in this perfect kind of way for me personally because this, for, you know, for me it's always been it's either uh, you're too small or this character doesn't work, all that. AEW here, they never said any of that to me. Th those things are what they wanted uh, me for. You're just you. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. I get to be me, and I think everyone here gets to be them. And I think most of the people here, for this reason or that reason, are not the stereotypical wrestler that you would imagine to succeed but I think that is kind of what becomes our strength and what's going to make us different and exciting and um, yeah I, I, I don't think I could have put together a better kind of dream team promotion than this yeah, I was told early in my wrestling career by people that supposedly know what they're saying that I wasn't right for wrestling and I should quit and find something else to do. I've, I've had so many doors shut in my face. Other promotions have told me this character is just too far out there. We don't know what to do with it. And AEW is trying to change the whole narrative of wrestling. Let's look at this with a different lens. This is 2019. Different things are now possible in any form of entertainment. And what we're trying to do here is we're creating a story that's never been done. And, you know, some, some parts of it can be funny, we can be goofy, we can laugh at ourselves. But then when we get in the ring, we're going to do high quality things that you've never seen before, that you didn't think was possible in wrestling because you have one perception of what wrestling is. And my goal with what we're doing is to change that and show people that anything's possible out there, that if you watch what we do, you're going to be entertained. So my last question for you guys, uh, what, I've, I've asked this question to a couple of people already, um, they're obviously challenges involved with with this i mean we're going live on on all over the world you yep. know tnt of course we talked about uh aew plus on fight.tv yep. um what challenges are you most looking forward to about this new project uh f for me it's kind of an interesting parallel because this is my this is my first time kind of being a professional professional wrestler um so I, I feel like I'm at a very young stage in my career, and AEW as a whole is too. So it's going to be interesting for me to to be learning about TV and how this all works, kind of at the same time that the whole company is going through that same process, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I think for me personally, I want to kind of change the perception of what a big guy wrestling is all about. And I know there's other big guys out there now that try to do athletic things, that do flips, that do kicks. But for me, there needs to be a standard of movement, a standard of accountability. And it's not good enough just to try things as a big guy. Wow, he's big. He, he did that. That's cool. No, it needs to be good. It needs to be as good as one of the smaller guys doing it or you shouldn't do it. So everything I do out there in the ring, I want my performance to be in my mind flawless whatever it takes to get to that level and I want to kind of give my all every time I'm out there and I want to give the crowd again something that they go home and go wow that was really entertaining I had a great time because that's how you leave a legacy to me with an audience and that's really what I want to do it's not enough for me just to go out there and have the match and you know 
have a contract and right. be happy wrestling. It's not enough. I want to be here, and I think the guys in charge here have that vision where we want to actually leave a legacy and create something for future wrestlers, for fans in the future, something that they get more out of wrestling finally. Because for the last 20 years, it hasn't been there. And people have wanted more. And this is our chance to do it, and I take that seriously. Well, that's great. And I wish you guys absolutely nothing but the best of luck uh, tonight, next week, the week after, because it's... It's we're starting now, and yeah. you're just and you're just going. Go. Uh, AEW Dynamite live tonight. We're just hours away. Don't miss it. AEW Plus on Fight TV for the same cost of what you paid for that cup of coffee over there, Jungle Boy. This one's free. But. All right. Well, so it's not going to be free. To, but what he would have if he wasn't Jungle Boy, it's not that if good he had to either, pay for coffee. Okay. It's not well, good coffee. And the quality is way better than that cup of coffee that he didn't yep. have to pay for because he's Jungle Boy. You are going to have to pay four ninety nine or two ninety nine just to watch tonight. Only four ninety nine. Only four ninety nine. Isn't this it? ridiculous? I'm going to get it for myself. It's four ninety nine. That's not I'm just. I'm going to get two of them. That's for everything. For two of them? Yeah. Why not? Can you do that? Well, that's a great thing. Okay. Yeah. You watch it on one device. Watch it on another yeah. device at the same time. You can probably I do know. that with the one. Person. Are you in a cave? Is that where you live? Excuse me. Or, is, all right. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. I didn't, the tar was pits. Really that was the. Tar, okay. I apologize. Well, I didn't know. Not a cave. Down in the tar pits. The tar pits. Yeah, but you can't have a TV in it. Tar pit. We right. live in La Brea, all right? All right. I have That's disrespected fair. a dinosaur, right. and I want to apologize. I apologize. The Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, thank you guys so much for thank being you. here. We will be right back. That's it for this episode of So Says Chernoff Interview Archives. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast feed for more great interviews all summer long, leading up to the return of So Says Chernoff every week starting this fall. Give us a follow on social media if you would be so kind at So Says Chernoff and at Chernoff Show. And give us a subscribe over at youtube.com slash So Says Chernoff where you can find a lot of this content and more in video form. I hope that you will join us next week for another interview. This has been So Says Chernoff because that is what Chernoff had to say. We'll see you next time.